All right, thanks for watching. And today, from the producer of the integral x to the x, comes another special where I evaluate not only the integral of x to the square root of x, but also the integral of square root of x to the x at the same time. So I'm literally killing two birds with one stone. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is even the most general case where I evaluate the integral from zero to one of x to any constant x to the alpha dx. And the nice thing is the proof is almost exactly the same. You just have to add a bunch of constants. So how do we start? Well, we want to write x to the c to the x to the alpha as, you know, e to the something. And remember, e of ln of x is x, so it's just uh, e of ln of x to the cx to the alpha, but that's just the same as e to the cx to the alpha ln of x. And the reason we're doing this, this is nice, because remember, e has its Taylor expansion, right? e to the y, for example, is the sum from n, from 0 to infinity, of y to the n over n factorial. And therefore, just plugging in y as cx to the alpha ln of x, we get the sum from 0 to infinity of cx to the alpha ln of x to the n over n factorial, which gives us the in, sorry, sum from 0 to infinity, c to the n, x to the alpha n, ln of x to the n over n factorial. Basically, the only thing we need to do to calculate the integral, we just need to integrate this expression term by term because uh, I think because the radius of convergence is infinity, so um, Taylor series can be integrated term by term. So this is a constant, this is a constant. Let's focus on this part. So now let's do the integral of x to the alpha n, ln of x to the n. And they really, huh? It used to be two sliding blackboards, but I guess they changed that. Um, so. That was the first step. The second step is let's integrate x to the alpha n, ln of x to the n. Ah, oh, much better. Okay. 0 to 1, x to the alpha n, ln of x to the n, dx. I knew I had the marker that was working. I just wasn't sure which one. Okay. Now, it turns out, and you know, we want to use gamma functions in the end, so it would be nice, for example, to get rid of this ln of x. So let's use a u sub, u equals to ln of x, then du is 1 over x dx, and that becomes, so 1 over x, so sorry, x is e to the u, so 1 over x is e to the minus u. So it becomes e to the minus u dx. So dx is e to the u du. And lastly, technically it's an improper integral because ln of 0 is not defined. So we really, really do 0 plus. And u of 0 plus, it's ln of 0 plus, which is minus infinity. And u of 1, that's 0. So what this integral becomes after this long use of is the integral from minus infinity to zero of e, so x is e to the u, so e to the alpha and u, and u to the n because of the ln, and remember we have this dx is e to the u du, so we get an extra factor of e to the u. So what we're left with is then the integral from negative infinity to zero. Let's put the e's together. So e to the u and one plus alpha n, u to the n du. And we can clean this up a little bit more. So you would say let v be u times this constant. I wanna go a step further because 
Turns out infinity is nicer than negative infinity. So let's just let v be minus u of 1 plus alpha n. And then, you know, v of minus infinity is inf becomes, so infinity times this positive constant. So we'll choose alpha positive that makes this work. And so this becomes infinity, v of zero, that's zero. And lastly, dv becomes minus one plus alpha n du. So du is one over this jump dv. So we're left with the integral from infinity to zero of e of minus v, and then u becomes minus v over one plus alpha n to the n, and one over uh, minus one plus alpha n, and then dv. Okay, so that's good. And then what do we get? Well, first of all, this is indeed in the wrong order, but we have this minus sign. So in fact, we get that it's in the right order. And then this minus one to the end literally becomes minus one to the end. So write that down, or as I said, pause if you wanna write that down. Um, I am left-handed, so I do cover a lot of the whiteboard, and if I put it with the camera angle, there'll be 10,000 co uh, uh, complaints. So <laughs> if you do that and you um, calculate, so if you clean up that integral, then you get as follows. Then you get, again, this minus one to the end comes out from this minus one to the end. The minuses, they clean up the integral, integral from zero to infinity, e of minus v, v to the n, dv, and we have our constant. Remember, one plus alpha n, I believe, to the n plus one. Because this is a factor of to the n, and we have this extra factor. So it becomes n plus one. And this term, it turns out, either you integrate by parts n times, or you just recognize it in terms of the gamma function. So this is gamma to the n plus 1, which is the same thing as n factorial. So, or, yeah, if you want, it's, what is this pi function, pi of n, and then it's n factorial for integers. And so in the end, that integral, I mean, that's, mini integral becomes minus one to the n times n factorial of one plus alpha n to the n plus one. Which is great, because remember in our series, we have this n factorial, and so basically the n factorials cancel out. So what do we get at the end? Integral from zero to one, x to the c, x to the alpha dx, equals the sum from n from zero to infinity we still have this c to the n and the n factorial times precisely the integral that we want, integral from zero to one, x to the alpha n, ln of x to the n, dx. And we just calculated this to be minus one to the n, n factorial over this thing, sum from zero to infinity of uh, c to the n over n factorial, minus one to the n over one plus alpha n to the n plus one times n factorial. So that's the important part. And n factorials cancel out. And lo and behold, you get your final answer. You get that the integral from zero to one, x to the c, x to the alpha dx is the sum from n from zero to infinity of c to the n minus one to the n of one plus alpha n to the n plus one. That is our answer, and let's uh, play with this a little bit. So let's see what we get for various values of c and alpha. But also if you want some formula for this, you know, this is the same as one over, uh, let's see, one 
Well, 1 plus alpha over is times 0 is just 1. So this becomes 1 minus C. Uh, sorry, uh, minus C over 1 plus alpha squared plus C squared over 1 plus 2 alpha cubed minus C cubed over 1 plus 3 alpha fourth plus etc. Et so we get this explicit sum and let's just, as I said, play with this a little bit. So because as I said, from this we can get both the integral of x to the square root of x and also the integral of square root of x to the x. But first, let's just do the classical case. If alpha is 1 and c is 1, then you just get the integral of x to the x dx, which in this case just becomes the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n and then 1 plus alpha, uh, so 1 plus n to the n plus 1, which is again 1 minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over so it's uh, 3 cubed like this really cute sum minus 1 over 4 fourth etc etc now what happens if we for example let alpha be 1 and c be 1 half then we get integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 1 half x dx and that's precisely x to the 1 half to the x, which is the integral of from 0 to 1 of square root of x to the x dx. And what this becomes, it's the sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 half to the n times minus 1 to the n over uh, 1 plus alpha, oh, sorry, 1 plus n to the n plus 1 which is basically the same sum, except we just add factors of one half. So this would be uh, something like a one minus one half over two squared plus one quarter over three cubed minus one eighth over four to the fourth, etc., etc. On the other hand, what if we now let alpha be one half and c be uh, 1, then we get the other one. So alpha is 1 half, c is 1, then we get precisely the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x to the 1 half, which is x to the square root of x. And in that case, we get the sum from 0 to infinity of, where were we? So c is 1, so minus 1 to the n, over 1 plus 1 half times n, so n over 2, to the n plus 1, which becomes 1 minus, if you want, uh, 1 over 3 halves squared plus 1 over 5 halves cubed, I think. Let me see, no, sorry. Uh, uh, so for n is 1, we get 3 halves. For n is 2, we get 2. So uh, 2 cubed. 2 cubed, and then minus 1 over 5 halves, I think, this time. Uh, to the fourth, etc., etc. So this is your thing, and uh, I think we can... Uh, you know, also write it as 1 minus 2 squared over 3 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed minus 1 over 2 to the 4th over 5 to over 4th, etc., etc. And maybe one last example. I think what about alpha equals 2 and c is 1. Then we get the integral of x to the x squared. And c equals 1 integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x squared dx. And in that case, we get the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 1 plus 2n to the n plus 1. 
So we basically get oh something really cute. So one minus one over a three halves, three squared, plus one over five cubed. So basically odd numbers, minus one over seven to the fourth, plus dot dot dot. So sort of this really cool alternating sum. And unfortunately, we don't have more explicit formulas to that than this, because ideally it would be nice to have a, a closed form formula, but I don't think that exists in this case. But so, we have this really nice thing that allows us to calculate a whole family of integrals. Uh, and so I hope you like this little excursion into calculus. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.